Okay folks, I'm going to show you a demonstration which you probably haven't seen. It has to do with a tube. I'm going to call it a cavitation tube because I'm going to be demonstrating cavitation. And you can see it's just a plastic tube filled up to here with water and it's not doing anything at the moment. Now I will hopefully, and you can perhaps see the bubbles form there and down at the bottom. Okay, so, well after recording it, I realized that we needed to have a close-up of the thing, of the tube, so I'm making that here, and now you can see the, you can clearly see the, the breaking up at the beginning, okay? So, what was causing that? Well, you saw that there was vapor pockets, and they grew, and then they collapsed. And when they collapsed, it was rapid, and it was, then there was a loud snapping noise, which indicates high pressures at, at that location when, it, when, the, when, the, when the cavity collapses. Right? Now, this isn't just a phenomenon that occurs in cavitations. That doesn't, it's a phenomenon that just occurs in, in plastic tubes in a, in a basement of a house. It actually occurs on propellers. Uh, in water. In this case, it's a, in a water tunnel, and you can see the cavitation bubbles on the surface of the blade and on the tip vortices coming off the, the tips of the blade. And the same sort of thing happens at full scale with ship propellers on operating at, at high speed. Okay. So this is straight out of Wiki. Um, it's essentially saying that the vapor bubbles form and the liquid-free zones, and then when they get to high, when the pressure is low, that's when they occur. When they collapse, you can send out very high pressure waves or shock waves in the, in, in the fluid, and it can cause an intense uh, wear. And in fact, if you go to a, a, a um, outboard motor boat and you look at the propeller, you'll see it's, uh, it's been used very much, you'll find that it's all pitted. And it's pitted because of this cavitation phenomena collapsing on the surface of the blades and eroding the metal. Okay, So, how do we explain it? Well, there's three properties of the water involved in here that we have to concern ourselves with, and that's the vapor pressure of the water. Now, the vapor pressure is the pressure at which the water will boil. Now, it's a function of temperature. So, the, if you're at atmospheric, if you're at sea level, the boiling point of water, pure water, is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Or, okay, and if you go to Denver, the pressure is lower and the, the boiling um, the temperature is, is lower. So you can carry on, keep lowering the pressure and lowering the temperature. Eventually you'll get down to the temperature in the room and then what is the pressure that it would boil at, uh, at room temperature. Okay, so that's one thing. So that tube, of course, it's at room temperature. So the pressure inside there is going to have to be lower than sea level pressure or atmospheric pressure. There's a gravitational pressure that varies along the top due to the hydrostatic. We won't, we won't add in the, um, the air that's here, but just the hydrostatic pressure of the, the, this piece of water on top of that and top of that building up till you get to the bottom of the tube. And then there's an acceleration pressure gradient. Well, if I were to... Um, just consider the tube itself now. If I was to take this tube and pull it like that down, accelerate it downward, there'd be a force down here to cause it to accelerate, and that force would get less and less and less until we got up here, and I was only accelerating this little piece here, and eventually that, and eventually there'd be no, nothing being moved, and therefore the, the acceleration force at, at that cross section would be very low. So in that case, pulling it down, there's, an, there's a tension in this thing, because this, the uh, plastic, resists the motion. Similarly, if I reverse the, the situation and, uh, <clears throat> and stop it from accelerating downward. It's moving and then I stop it. Now, the same thing can happen if I pull at the bottom of the liquid and I put, now the liquid it goes into tension. But of course, if the vapor pressure is, is equal to the temperature in here and, and pressure is equal to the vapor pressure, then uh, when I pull it, I create a, a, um, a, temp, a pressure at some point and which it then will flash and turn into and cause this uh, 
thing to, to flash into to, uh, vapor, and then when I stop moving it, because you'll notice it's only a, 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 jer a jerky motion I use, and then um, the, the pressure is adjusted and it comes back to the non-moving situation. So that's what this sign essentially says, <coughs> and it's the local pressure then is the sum of this gravitational head and the acceleration head, and that varies in depth in the liquid and the direction of acceleration of the liquid, or the tube causing it. So here's the situation where there's no motion, no acceleration, and so if we didn't evacuate the tube, we'd have atmospheric pressure here, and then we'd have the hydrostatic pressure down at the bottom of the tube would be equal to the weight of the, well, the, the pressure times the area would be equal to the weight of the column of, of, of water, okay? We evacuate it, we now move the zero to this point, the dotted line, so we have this pressure, then we move down here, and then that's the pressure at the bottom, a good deal less, okay? So that's the stationary tube, no cavitation, since the pressure everywhere is greater than the, um, cap the vapor pressure. So we'll have to get it less than in here somewhere, so it'll, it'll cause it to vapor, to vaporize. And that's what happens in this case, where <clears throat> we have it evacuated, there's the gravitational piece, uh, the gra hydrostatic pressure, so it's that much, and then we accelerate it, and we actually put a tension, and the, the, the pressure is less than zero, and we add the blue one to the, this one, to the red one, and we end up with somewhere in here with a pressure that's lower than, uh, equal to or lower than the uh, vapor pressure, and it cavitates. And the same thing, you can walk through the same thing here, where you're, you're decelerated. In that case, then these, the uh, acceleration pressure adds to, and you end up with a pressure significantly greater. Okay? And there's, there's no collapse at that point. So, that... Uh, explains it. I didn't put any numbers in there, but uh, that's the, the general physics of it, and it's uh, quite an interesting sort of phenomena. But it's a phenomena that involves a number of different properties of the water, not just the vapor pressure, but a number of things, and the condition in which it's vibrating, or being accelerated and uh, decelerated, just to show you that it wasn't, I wasn't fooling. It's repeatable. Okay?